I'm Vin. I'm sorry. And this is thrice. Death from above. For the bit. That's uh, what's that? Night Stalkers. Uh, U.S. Air Force. That's it. That's one of those. Uh, okay. And this is for Ao. This is for Ao. <laughs> of course, it's it's thrice. <laughs> shout out to all the thrice thrice fans are like really really involved. Man. Yeah. So shout out to all the thrice fans. I didn't know how uh, deep the uh, cult following went. It was cute because he was in the comment section. And then he ended up requesting more songs after the comment section because of what everybody was saying they wanted to hear. Mm -hmm. So I thought that was sweet. Um, for timely topical political commentary, you can hit me up at Minimal America with Vinny and Sori. Uh, I do have something to say about the secret police siphoning people away. That should be interesting. Um, also, uh, if you would like to get your song reviewed, Dale, listen, and there are multiple ways to achieve that, and my favorite way is a community option, one dollar the gate gets you in at Patreon, where you get to meet the amazing Helen Dross, uh, uh, Ian of the Village, Pony of the Village, if you're a big Nightwish fan, Pony will hook you up. You pull your points together, there are different tiers, one tier gets you a, a, a t-shirt, another, you know, choose your pick. Your different tiers, you go, you pull your points together, and that determines what songs we review. Mm -hmm. Now, if you are a filthy capitalist like Sori, and you want to jump to the head of the line, you don't want to work with the, any teammates, you can do what the big homie Ao did. $125 gets you straight into But look, he your... was working with teammates. What teammates? He went with the comment section of what people asked. Oh, he did. He did go with the comment section. Yeah. So he's not a filthy hey. capitalist. No, no, no. Ao's not a filthy capitalist. He's doing it for the people. She yep. just said it. Uh, you do that three, three times, you get you get bumped down to the uh, seventy-five dollar uh, tier, and you get a lifetime subscription to the VIP backstage. Uh, sorry, oh, and if I, you're wondering how you can do that, you can do that either through PayPal or one of my buddies told me that you can actually go onto the fifty dollar tier on Patreon, and you can decide how much. Like fifty is the minimum, and so you just jump to seventy-five. And you say, I will pay 75. Yeah, if you've if you've done it, if you've done it three right. times. You've done it okay, times. so there you go. Uh, we're we're currently in a band. PayPal. We started a band with uh, myself, Sori, Jay Dispirited, and uh, Sarcast, and then the uh, our our bassist, which we're trying to find. He's a six string bassist. So if you can locate this fella, I'll get you a shirt. Leah said if you're having a shortage of uh, vocalists. No, uh, guitar players. She's been playing for 20 years. No shit. Yeah. I was like, what? We might do the Iron Maiden thing. I might. I might just do that. All right. Ready? Put her in the thing. All right. Let's go. Uh, thrice, death from above. This should be interesting. Please. 
<coughs> Yikes. <coughs> well. <clears throat> These guys are very, very, this, this is making my, uh, my playlist. playlist my, yeah. I'll, I'll be listening to this while I'm planking tonight, inshallah, or this morning, whatever it is. Um, it's going to be this morning because it already is. One forty six sure a.m. Sounds like a definitely an Air Force thing. It sounds like a drone thing because he says they're not That's real. That's what it sounded like to me. Was says they're not real. They're targets on a screen, yeah. which is really interesting because I think like Prince, one of the princes got in trouble because he joined the military, and uh, he said it was like a video game, playing a video game like the drones or whatever. I think it was a he Prince got in Harry. Trouble? Oh yeah, people are like, what do you mean a video game? What are you talking about? Well, you know what I mean. Yeah, he suggested. I feel like that they're probably already out of touch with reality because they have so much privilege. And I, then I forgot which prince it was, but go ahead. You know what I mean? Like they're already such a privileged people, and already not like the, having the like feeling for the lesser guys. So then you put him in a situation like that, and so he's looking at it as a video game because, you know. Yeah, but he was he joined the military. Yep. So. You know, that's not, he didn't have to do that. Like, you know. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, I hear what you're saying, although I, a lot of guys who are, you know, Gross, uh, Grossman talks about this in that Killology book, um, where they talked about the history of combat and warfare, particularly when it comes to killing people. Yeah. And, um, you know, you know, we talked about originally there was a bullseye and then it evolved into a silhouette and then the silhouette was just a random person and then they turned the silhouette into a person that looks like the people you're going to fight. Yeah. So that you can, you know, you can mm -hmm. go out there and, and do what you do, you know. So I hear you, I hear you what, what you're saying, but it just seems to me to be a guy who was successfully trained because... You'll hear infantry guys, dudes that are, you know, putting people down. They're, they're like, it's just like in training. It's just a silhouette, and you pop it, down it goes. See what I'm saying? So, I think that that's more of a uh, the public not understanding how um, what military culture is. See what I'm saying? Because if they did, then they would understand that, you know. What else do you expect them to do? You expect them to say these are fully human well, beings yeah. that we're killing and whatever. Like, yeah. Again, read, if you read Grossman's book, you'll see. Like, the minute you have that in your head, that's the difference between life and death. So, <clears throat> but at the same time, that's not going to leave you. He's got to live with whatever he took part in. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. Um, so yeah, I think that they did a good <clears throat> job in this song bringing across that that feeling. Yeah. But I'm never sure who I'm killing. How many innocents were in the building? Right. I dropped death out of the no longer human beings, no longer people, just targets on a screen. None of it is real. I dropped death out of the sky. Tell me why. And then it was pretty crazy when he went to see the chaplain and the chaplain just told him like, just shut your mouth and go do the will of God. Like, <laughs> I was, I was, uh, I was watching, uh, these dudes were about to go off and, and uh, kill people. I mean, they were bad people. And the <laughs> dude gets up and he says, hey, uh, square it however you want with whatever God you worship, we roll out, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> so he basically said, go in your tent, read your Bible, find somewhere to square what we're about to do, but we're about to, we're about to drop bodies. So, and it was just a very strange moment for me to like see that, like, yo, like what? Wait, what? Mm -hmm. <laughs> like you know? Um, yeah. That that's why that guy must have been in it for a while. I mean, again, it's one of those things where it's like, what are you gonna do? You know, you're gonna tell these kids. These are 18, 19 year old kids. Like you're gonna tell them, hey, look, man, we're you're about to go, no, I go hear against you. everything I hear you. your religion says. Yeah. <laughs> Let's get out. Like you, you know, you have to have that sort of calloused. You know, whatever. just yeah. a horrible, horrible situation to be in. But yeah, like, I could definitely see, like, this being a true story. I, not for him. I don't think he was ever in the military. But I can definitely see that this is, like, that's what a chaplain would say. Mm -hmm. Because what other choice does he have? Like, if you're about to spin out in 20 minutes, 
Like, that's not the time for the dude to be having an existential crisis. You should have right. really thought of that, about that before yeah. you joined the military and before you selected a combat MOS. Right. Like, you you knew, I mean, if you if you sign up with a condo, combat MOS post 9-11, like, you know, you know the chances are extremely high you might be killing someone. So I get why the, the chaplain would say that in the sense of if this kid is having this, like, Philosophical and moral quandary. Twenty minutes out, he's going to be a liability on the field. Oh, absolutely. He's going to be a liability. But that's he's... not where this situation is because their targets on the screen. True story. You're right. You're right. Um, but that could still make him a liability because if he, he drops it too babies. early, yeah, mm -hmm. and kills civvies, or he drops it too late and some of the boys die. I mean, horrible situation to be in. So, I actually really resonate a lot with this verse. Like, especially, like, the, the first two lines. I always thought, I always thought that there was something different setting us apart. Like, this is the oh, American exceptionalism. This is, and it's one of those things where, like, when you run into your European friends, particularly Peter, Peter's country, they're not very big at, he's an Austrian, of course, radical patriotism, you know, what that mm -hmm. led to. Um, but aside from Peter, there's so many Europeans that don't understand the American mindset. Mm -hmm. It's like, oh, there's a gun control problem, just make it illegal. Like, that's not how Americans operate, man. Like, Americans believe that they are the, we're the exception. All you other people have to give Honestly. up your guns to the government. Uh -huh. You silly Japanese going around there with the, with the, with the masks. You know, Japan only has like uh, 958 COVID deaths. And we just, you know, we had 946 a couple of days ago. Like, that's how I was showing you that graph. I'm like, yo, we are <laughs> pretty much in a one day what Japan is since the beginning of the outbreak. These Americans are just, but I, I didn't know that at the time as a young, impressionable individual, you know, mm. especially you're, you know, being led by men with sober minds and sympathetic hearts. Mm. Like, it's a real, you know, during the Bush administration, Republicans are very good at positioning themselves as being pro pro soldier, mm -hmm. you know, that type of thing. Um, but I think there's a difference between being pro war and pro, pro soldier, and a lot of times that is. What do you mean? Well, being pro war means that anything that happens forever, for whatever yeah. reason, let's go and let's stay there, let's not pull out, yada yada yada. When you talk about Trump and yeah, what, yeah. Afghanistan, being pro soldier means that you want what's best for the soldier. Well, what's best for the soldier is for him to come home if, if he's fighting a war that, yeah, that is useless and man meaningless, yeah. right? So, I think the Republicans, I mean, I think Trump is probably the most pro-soldier president we've had in the last three or four terms. Because he's like, no, we're not going to go to a war with Iran. Mm -hmm. No, I'm not going to act on ridiculous, faulty intelligence and, and screw with that peace deal that we have with them. Mm -hmm. Like... We're going to stay the course and we're going to bring the guys home. Yeah. Because that's what he said he was going to do. He's going to yeah. end the forever wars. Um, but, you know, I was having a conversation with uh, Sayla. And, you know, she was talking about coronavirus. She's like, we should bomb China. You know, she's been, she's had a My steady, gosh. steady diet of Ben Shapiro. <laughs> she's like, we should bomb China. And I said, oh, well, what happens if you bomb someone is that more likely than not, you're going to kill innocent people. And she's like, ugh. But then I told her, and this is true, it was a, it's a very, very common tactic, especially once they figured out the drone. So that's our, Sela is our 10 year old. Yeah, pretty sure they know. Well, I don't think everybody knows the whole of our family. Oh, that's true. That's true. <laughs> um, so I was explaining to her that, look, when you when you bomb someone, the bomb does not know that this is a civvy, this is a... Yeah. Uh, but, I, you know, I said conversely, and this is just a documented fact. Once these dudes started figuring out that they were getting droned and there was really nothing they could do mm -hmm. to stop it, they would start posting up in schools, hospital yep. masjids, and it was basically, I dare you to do yep. this. You know, but the thing is, a lot of these dev crew, CAG guys, Delta, whatever you want to call them, like... That's their specialty, a CQB, you know, which is, you know, you go, you have a stack and go through the door and you, you know, whatever. They're, they're, they're like, that's what we do. Mm -hmm. Like, let us go there and, and clear the hospital. Don't blow up the hospital, mm -hmm. you know. Um, mm -hmm. But there were a couple times when people were like, oh yeah, you're going to the hospital? <laughs> like, 
<laughs> like it's it's just unbelievable. So I think that it's really horrible and terrible to do that. I think that it's horrible and terrible for them to post up in the hospital too. I, yeah, I think that makes and sense. And I think worse. that honestly, that I I'm not going to be the one to to make that decision or push that button. But if there are a couple people that are willing to do that, that maybe that would kind of deter them from doing it. It wouldn't. Great. Because I'll tell you why. Because it has a double edged it's a double edged sword. If we do it, then if, they say, "Look at the Americans and what they did." Yeah, right. And that's why he said on the laugh in the bridge, he says, "Tell me why to make it safe so it would seem, but we shoot further than we dream. Can't we see? We only justify." Now watch this. Someone else is resolved to rise against and avenge the innocent. Mm -hmm. So what he's saying is, this program, the drone program, is like the number one recruiting tool for ISIS, Al Qaeda, Jabhat mm -hmm. al Nusra, whatever, whatever, because. It, it, they're, they're going around and saying, look at this, and then they take the casket up, and they, they don't tell you that they post it up in the building, or they don't tell you they post it up in the masjid, yeah. they just post up there, and then, you know, it influences people, and any yeah. warm-blooded dude is going to pick up a, a, a AK-47 after seeing something like that, you know what I mean? Yeah. So, yeah. so he's absolutely right, you know, like, we significantly degraded Al-Qaeda, especially in Iraq. Um, so if you're completely Machiavellian in your perspective on this stuff, then you know it did what it was supposed to do. Mm -hmm. And it's the whole conundrum of, yeah, you're killing a bunch of innocent civilians, but how many civilians would get killed if this guy's still alive? And aren't you responsible for those deaths? And that's sort of the corner they put you in. And then you say, uh, I would much rather be responsible for the lesser deaths, obviously, and responsible for the death of this bad guy. Yeah. Whereas they say, if you let yeah. this guy go, you are responsible for the deaths of all those people, but not the death of the actual bad guy. So what are you going to do? Mm -hmm. well, you press the button and blow those kids in the smithereens. <clears throat> so it's just, our leadership, it's unbelievable. Because as an American, there's all this hype for the people, of the people, by the people, or yeah. the democratic republic, and yada, yada, yada. And it's, you know, it's a very traumatic moment when people realize that they're being used by the government and all this other nonsense like it's a very hard thing to kind of reconcile people start doubting everything so <clears throat> no longer human beings no longer people just targets on the screen um how many innocents were in the building i mean just just a horrific i, don't think I, can do it. I don't think I have it in me well i mean i say this to people all the time like if that guy doesn't die. This guy's a hitman, right? Let's say the guy's a hitman, and then he puts, you know, Orion on his hit list. You wouldn't bomb that school if he was there? Orion is our one-year-old. <laughs> he would bomb the shit out of those people. He absolutely would. How many times did I hit that button? You, 100 times out of 100, you would. No, I'm saying, like, <laughs> the bomb keeps oh, getting bigger. Right. Yeah. <laughs> what time is it? Well, that's, that's the thing. You know, so psychological operations is done, you know, to our enemies. It's also done to our mm -hmm. c citizens, and it's definitely done uh, with the military. Mm -hmm. And it's not that difficult when you're talking about 19, 20-year-old kids who are, you know. And, and the other thing is, is just, I don't know how to say that. But I play at God, play at Grodd across such distances and from so great a height. It's like one of the craziest things. Like here you are sitting in your nice comfortable seat in Washington or whatever it is, and then you get to you get to go and deal with death from above. And it, mm -hmm. it is sort of a god complex, special. Mm -hmm. But it's like what are they supposed to do? You know? And that's why I'm like, by the time this kid is dealing with that moral quandary, it's too late. Mm -hmm. He should have thought of that before he joined the combat MOS. And in reality, the real culprits are the our government, who continuously sends these people into war yeah. for reasons where we don't need, we didn't need to be in that situation in the first place. So I lay most of the blame on them. Definitely, there's some sociopathic whatever in every category, but we keep putting very young people in life or death situations. I, but I also crazy. think that there there must be some people that haven't necessarily like maybe some people went into it thinking that it was black and white. You know what I mean? Like there's a bad guy and we're the good guys and we're gonna do the right thing. Yeah. And and we're gonna better humanity because of what we're doing. Like we have to make sacrifices, but we're willing to do it. But then 
you it's kind of like whoa 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 like when you get there and you start realizing that there's all these extra things you didn't think about like you know especially if they're young and they sign up and they're I don't know you, you don't stand a chance yeah you know, Eminem wrote a song about that he's like now you're sitting on a chopper eating baked beans what you know about war you're only 18 you know like it's just great like Jimmy Dore was saying like there are kids in Afghanistan right now 18 19 years old who all they know is their country has been in conflict with Afghanistan. Mm -hmm. That's their entire conscious life. Mm -hmm. um, and so it's like, it's weird to me that there are people on our planet fighting over there yeah. who we're not alive to experience America outside of the Iraq and Afghanistan wars, you know, and all the yeah. wars we're fighting right now. It's just, it's a sad, sad state of affairs. But I remember during, not much 2016, but Man, 2008, 2009, you said anything negative about the war, they would just spit it as, you hate the troops. And you had all these left-wing people saying, how do I hate the troops by wanting them to come home? Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. What do you mean? Uh, you know, it's it's a, it's just a crazy world we live in, and unfortunately it's the civilian, or the, the, the foot soldiers on both sides and the civilians on both sides that end up bearing the consequences yeah. of our horrible leadership and their horrible, cowardly, hypocritical leadership. Telling those kids to strap up uh, suicide vests and go into the middle of the souk. The souk mm -hmm. is a uh, it's a market. Mm -hmm. The kid was mentally retarded. The guy, you know, he blew him to smithereens so he could kill other people. Like, just both sides are just absolutely yeah, disgusting. They'll send people out to die, send them into the meat grinder, you know, and then now this guy who this person's incarnating now has to deal with the ramifications of what he did. Just mind-boggling stuff. But they did a very, very, very good job with it. Um, the next song is called Whistleblower, so that's interesting. Mm -hmm. um, so I don't know, I think, I think maybe this is a continuation maybe from the previous song or whatever, mm -hmm. but man, tough stuff. I what think do you it was an important song. I also think that it, I liked I really like the band. <laughs> I like uh, the Justin Kensru, is that his name? Kensru. Dustin, yeah. Yeah, yeah, he's the vocalist, lyricist, rhythm guitarist in the post-hardcore rock experimental mm -hmm. band Thrice. I mean, the guy is extremely talented. Obviously, yeah. <laughs> well, it just reminds me of the conversation we had in the studio. I can't come up with all the riffs and the writing and the bass and the blah, 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 blah. <laughs> Uh, Why did you get the song? Um, it's a 9.3 for me. This is a 10 for me. I knew it was going to be a 10 for 10. you. Very, very good song. Yeah. Very good song. So, moral of the story is um, play video games, not drones. Because drones are not video games. Hell of drones. Vin out. Sorry, out. Gone.
Yeah.